All right, so here we go with our introduction to integers lesson. Today, the essential question, which I want you to be able to answer by the end, is how are positive and negative numbers represented on a number line? All right, so after this lesson, I will be able to identify integers, plot and identify integers on a number line, represent real world situations with integers, and identify the opposite of a given number. All right, so out of this lesson, I'm expecting you to be able to do four different things. Keep in mind that just because you're doing it in taking uh, in the video and taking the notes doesn't mean that you will be flawless at it or perfect at it at the end of this. When I talk about the lesson, I'm talking about the practice that goes with it as well. However, there are things in here you should be able to start doing them once you have completed the video lesson. All right, so just a review from your vocabulary. We have positive numbers, and positive numbers are greater than zero. And they are located to the right of zero on a number line. And positive numbers can be written with or without a plus sign. More often than not, though, you see it without the plus sign. Negative numbers, however, have a value that is less than zero. Okay, so a good example of this would be somebody who has negative $10 in their bank account. That means that they owe somebody $10. <clears throat> so that would be a value less than zero. And they are located to the left of the number line. Negative numbers must always be, be written with a negative sign. So there is no option if, in here. If you don't have the negative sign in front, it is considered a positive number. And then you have zero, and zero is its own special case because it is neither positive nor negative. Right? There is nothing when it comes to zero. So if you have nothing, it can't be positive, but it also can't be negative. All right, so we're gonna practice graphing or plotting the numbers on a number line. In this case, we see that each of our intervals, so here it goes by ones, and on the other side, it goes by ones, so we know our interval is one. And we have elevations of several locations in a state park, and we're going to plot them on a number line. Now notice here that Little Butte has a letter of A underneath it. That tells me that when I put it on the number line, I want to plot it, but I also want to label it with an A. That way, when I look at the number line, I know that point represents Little Butte. All right, Little Butte has an elevation of five feet. All right, so five feet would be above zero feet. So we know that it's going to be on the positive side. So I'm going to take my A, I'm going to find five, and I plot it, and then I write the A on top. Right? But then there's Cradle Creek, and Cradle Creek has, a, has an elevation of negative 5. Negative 5 being less than 0. So negative 5 would be to the left of 0, and it would be 5 spaces to the left of 0. Then you have Dinosaur Valley. Dinosaur Valley has an elevation of negative 8.5 feet. All right, so in this case, since we know that it's eight and a half, we know that it's not going to go directly on a hash mark, but it's going to go halfway between something because of that half. Now, here's the curious part. When we say eight and a half, over here, eight and a half would be to the right of the eight. However, in negative world, which is what we're working in, it's going to be to the left of eight. To help you remember this when you're plotting, think of what eight and a half is between. Regardless of if it's positive or negative, it has to be between eight and nine. So when you plot it, it has to be between eight and nine. So here, even in negative world, when I plotted it, it was between eight and nine. Mesa Ridge has an elevation of eight feet. Again, it's a positive number because it has no sign, so it's going to be to the right of zero, eight spaces. And Juniper Trail has an elevation of negative three feet. 
the negative tells me it's below zero, and the three tells me it's three spaces. So I can even count to double check. One, two, three, three spaces below zero is where I would plot. All right, so as long as you take your time and look at the number line and the intervals, and the intervals being how far is it between one number to the next. So between one and two is one. Between two and three is one. So your interval is one. As long as you take that time and figure out what your intervals are and where the numbers are on the number line, it's a really easy step from there to be able to plot your next set of numbers. All right, so now we're going to use the problem from above. You can still see it in your notes, but I'm going to pull my information out over here just for the reminder. And we're going to take a look at B. What point on the number line would represent C level? So I have all these different points here. I have 5, negative 5, negative 8 and a half, 8, and negative 3. Well, what point would be C level? C level it doesn't have a positive elevation, nor does it have a negative elevation. Well, what does that sound like? That sounds like zero. Zero is neither positive nor negative. And sea level is neither above sea level or below sea level, which is how we measure elevation. So in this case, the number that represents sea level would be zero. Which location is closest to sea level? All right, well, if I go now, I have to actually look at both directions. So there's nothing one away from zero on the positive side, and there isn't anything negative one on, or one away on the negative side. Two and two are empty, positive three is empty, but negative three is plotted. So in this case, even though it's a negative, Juniper Trail, which is E, is still closer than any other letter is to zero. So if you watch this, we have zero, which is sea level, and you're trying to figure out what's closer. So you can use your hops. So if I use my hops, I see that I am one, two, three hops away here. But anything else would be one, two, three, four, five. All right, so the closest one is three hops away, and that closest one would be E, which is Juniper Trail. All right, so my answer here wouldn't be E, my answer would be the closest location to Jun to sea level is Juniper Trail. How do I know? I know this because on the number line, it is the closest number to zero. So whichever number is closest to zero is going to be the elevation that's closest to sea level because zero and sea level are the same. Okay, and then is the location C above or below sea level? So we can look at our number line and we can see that C is to the left of zero, so it would have to be below sea level. We can also look at the information from the table and notice that it has a negative. Since it has a negative, that tells us that it's below zero. And since zero is sea level, that would tell us that C is below sea level. And here we can just write below. All right. So at this point, what I would like you to do is I would actually like you to pause. And I would like you to try plotting these numbers on the number line. And when you come back, check your work. All right, so in this case, F, Anchorage, Alaska's temperature of negative 4 should be here. Fargo, North Dakota's temperature of 9, so G would be here. Oslo, Norway, with a temperature of negative 6, 
would be over here. And St. Petersburg, Russia, with a temperature of negative 10, would be all the way down here. Hel Helsinki, Finland, with a temperature of 7 degrees, is going to be here. And Budapest, Hungary, is going to be right here. So we didn't have to plot any halves. So notice that there are no in-betweeners here. They're all landing on a hash mark because each hash mark represents a number. And in this case, <clears throat> it's an interval of one. So it's easy for us to count and figure out what number it is. All right, but now if we're going to talk about opposites, we are going to draw a number line and we're going to talk about what makes numbers opposite. In this case, we're going to talk about integers, okay, because it's asking us to um, plot integers negative 10 to 10. And I need you to remember that integers are your whole numbers and their opposites. So that's where this definition can become kind of confusing if you don't understand what opposites are. Okay, but what I really need you to understand is that integers can be positive or negative, but they cannot have decimals and they cannot have fractions. All right, so go ahead, take a minute and pause and go ahead and draw your number line. All right, to save us some time, excuse me, I am actually going to go back and I am going to steal a number line. Oops. There we go. I'm going to actually steal the number line from another page. So that way you don't have to watch me draw a number line. That would be painful. All right, but when you drew it on here, using each of these boxes would be helpful so that way you know your intervals are equal. Because when you draw a number line, you don't want your numbers all over the place or to have unequal intervals. So if all of a sudden, you know, from 0 to 1 was this far, but then on my other number line, 0 to 1 was over here. Okay, so if my negative 1 was all the way back here, my number line wouldn't match up correctly. All right, so we want to make our intervals and our spacing as close as possible. All right, so now that we've drawn our number line, we are going to use the number line to find the opposites of 7, negative 4, 1, and 9. Now remember, Opposites are numbers that are the same distance away from zero, but in different directions. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the seven, and I'm going to plot the seven using a black dot. Okay, so I know seven will be on the positive side, and it is right here. So the opposite of seven has to be seven away from zero because that's how far positive seven is away from zero but it has to be in the other direction so since we went this way to plot the seven we now have to go this way to plot its opposite all right and we're going to count seven spaces and we're going to count seven spaces to the left all right so here i have one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice where my plot is. Again, it is at a seven, but in this case, it's the negative seven. And the reason it's at negative seven is because it's still seven spaces away from zero, but in the negative world. So let's try that with four, and I'm gonna use a different color pen here. I'm gonna use blue. So negative 4, so I'm going to go ahead and plot it, and I know it's, oops, I might actually have to grab my pen here. I know it is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the left because it's negative. So its opposite has to be 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the right. Okay, even trying it with one. So one is one space to the right. So its opposite has to be one space to the left. 
Okay, so the opposite of 7 is negative 7. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. So now even without using the number line, if I'm looking at 9, I know 9 is positive, so its opposite would have to be negative. And 9 is 9 spaces from 0, so its opposite would have to be, again, 9 spaces from 0. The only number that is 9 spaces from 0 is 9 or negative 9. So therefore, they are opposite. So now, without using a number line, even though this number isn't an integer, okay, even though it has a decimal, that doesn't change anything. It still needs to be 8.5 steps away from 0. So the only thing that's going to be 8.5 steps away from 0 is the 8.5. However, this is positive, so it was to the right. So its opposite has to be negative, which would be to the left. And then now here, what is the opposite of 3? Well, 3 is 3 spaces to the right. So the opposite would be 3 spaces, but to the left. So a negative 3. Okay. So we're going to graph and label the following points on the number line. So negative 2 is A. 9.5 for B. So 9.5 would be on the right-hand side, and it would be halfway between 9 and 10. And I plot the B above it, so I know that that's point B. And then negative 8 would be 8 spaces away from 0, but to the left. And that is C. D is negative 9.5. So it would be 9.5 spaces to the left. So again, I know 9.5 is between 9 and 10 in the positive world. So it has to be between 9 and 10 in the negative world. And in this case, that's point D. E is positive 5. So 5 spaces to the right. And F is positive 8, so that would be 8 spaces to the right. All right, so I've plotted all of my points. Now the next thing it's asking me to do is to identify which of these points are integers. So point A is a negative 2. It's negative, so it can still be an integer, okay? And it doesn't have a decimal, and it doesn't have a fraction. Therefore, point A, so the negative 2, is an integer. So it said which points, not which numbers. Okay, so point A is. Now here, the number is positive, so it can still be an integer. However, it has this decimal right here, so it can't be an integer. So point B is not an integer. Point C is a negative 8, so being negative, it can still be an integer, and it doesn't have a fraction or a decimal, so point C is an integer. At this point, I want you to try D, E, and F on your own and come back and check your answers. All right, so you should have found that E and F are both integers, but D was not. All right, so the last step, which pairs of points represent opposites? So let's take a look, B and C. Well, B is nine and a half spaces away from zero, and C is eight spaces away from zero. So A cannot be an option. So choice B, C and F. C is eight spaces, and F is eight spaces. So, so far, so good. B and D. So B is nine and a half and D is nine and a half. So our answer here would be B. Let's check to see if we were correct. And yes, we were. All right. So this is the point in the video where I ask you to go ahead and try the problems on your own. But here is where you can come back afterwards and check your answers, okay? So this is where I ask you to pause, come back, and check to see how you did. So list the opposites, and then write integers to represent these real-world situations. 
All right, so your opposites here would be 9, negative 10, negative 45, 89, 121, and negative 67. Here, we want to look for keywords. So a gain would be something positive. So it would be a positive number. So it would be a positive 5. Here we have 6 feet, and it is below sea level. Below telling me it would be negative, so the integer would be negative 6. Here we have $35, so I know my number is 35, but it's a withdrawal. A withdrawal is when you take money out of your account, so that's actually a negative situation. And then you have ascend 100 meters. To ascend means you're going up, so that would be a positive situation. So this would be a positive 100 meters. All right, so your last step now is to answer the essential question. Okay, I gave you space in your notes, uh, so that way you could work on that. Okay, so the essential question being how are positive and negative numbers represented on the number line? And then your other piece is to do the guided practice. So you answer all these questions, 1 through 11, and you do so on your own, and then when you come back to class, we will check your answers. As always, if you have any questions, 